Hey guys. Hey. Hello. So I had this weird dream last night. Oh. I I dreamed that I was drowning in this ocean of orange soda. Hmm. Yeah, it was weird. And it took me a while to figure out that, you know, this wasn't real life. It was just a fantasy. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh this goes with the queen shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> Magnifico! Oh, that was good. That was good, man. That just look a story. I was all into it. You like that, yeah? Good job, buddy. Gotta keep my audience riveted. Yeah. Hi, everybody! We're doing it live. No <laughs> notes for you this time. Oh shit, I don't know what I'm doing. What show am I on? What is this? <laughs> what up, everybody? What's up, Familia? Welcome back to Pops On. It's another episode. Mm. Episode 49. We're almost, we're almost to 52. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. taken us more than 52 weeks on a weekly podcast to get to 52. <laughs> That's crazy. But we're almost there. Everybody, I am one of your hosts as always. This is Jay Alvarez across from me. Raul, what's going on, people? And then sitting next to Raul, as always, on the sound booth. My name is Marcel. And as always, we are coming out of Ghost Academy Studios. We want to start this episode, as we always do, of course, by thanking our sponsor, Brevard Nursing Academy. Upgrade your HHA to a Florida-licensed CNA in just five days. They have a proven step-by-step -step strategy to ace the official certification exam. Again, it only takes five days. You can do anything in five days. Mm -hmm. It takes you 21 days to quit smoking. Facts. Yes. Five days, you can be a CNA and be forced to quit smoking because he can't smoke in a hospital. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's how that works. Contact Brevard Nursing Academy today by calling 321-323-9554 or visit their website at www.brevardnursingacademy.com. And don't forget to tell them that the Pops on Podcast referred you. Yeah, man. Before we get into all this goodness, we do have some sad news. Yes. Sad, uh, sad news. Yes. Um, so this whole podcast came about because uh, most of you who have been listening know that Raul, Marcel, and I, we all we all work our day jobs together mm -hmm. at some company that no, no one's ever heard of. Nope. Um, but uh, Raul and I started talking because we realized that we both listened to Collider Movie Talk together, yep. or watched it on YouTube, rather. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons we got became so quick friends is because we both really liked one of their one of their contributors, uh, John Schnepp. Uh, John Schnepp actually created Metaloc Metalocalypse. Yep. Um, did a lot of uh, did a lot of work with Robot Chicken. Mm -hmm. um, what was the name of that damn documentary? Uh, uh, the, the Death, Death of, of Superman, Superman Returns. Lives. Yeah, The, the Death, Death of Superman, Superman Lives, What Happened, uh, which was a great documentary and a what happened to the movie that was supposed to star Nicolas Cage as Superman. Mm -hmm. Why didn't we get that movie? Mm -hmm. Watch The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, and you can find out. Um, unfortunately, John Schnapp, he, you know, is a guy who we all loved watching on YouTube. He's a guy that brought us together. Without this, without him, this podcast wouldn't be a thing. Wouldn't be a thing. No. Um, unfortunately, he passed away uh, July 19th from a severe stroke. Um, and our, our condolences and our best wishes go out to his closest loved ones and family. Um, it, it hit me kind of hard when I heard the news. Yeah, man. It uh, did too. When you, when you sent me that text message, I was, uh, I was doing, I, I think I was actually, you know, looking at Collider for some, for some of his insights because I haven't seen anything from yeah. you know, for the Comic Con thing. And as soon as you sent me, then I looked it up and I seen, um, you know, the videos of them talking about it. And I was like, nah, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it hurt. He was, and he was big on the conventions. I remember he went down to Miami for MegaCon. Mm -hmm. I'm not MegaCon, uh, SuperCon mm -hmm. is in Miami. Um, he's been to MegaCon in Orlando. He's gone to the Tampa Bay Comic Con. Um, he was big there. He, he was, he, every, he always, he was always funny to watch. He always had, even if it was a strong opinion, one that I agreed with. Yeah. Um, he he was just like a, he was a real dude, older than I thought. Yeah, I didn't know he was that old. He was born in what nineteen sixty seven. Um, looked great. Mm -hmm. I used to look at him like, man, this guy looks rough. Then I saw nineteen sixty seven. I was like, man, yeah. Schnapp looked amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So uh, again, uh, our condolences to the family. Um, John Schnapp will be remembered by us, especially hopefully by you all. Um, go up on YouTube to Collider Video. They actually have been streaming. Uh, John Schnepp's greatest hits. Um, well, well, I'll even plug it. Um, Collider Heroes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Uh, which is a great superhero uh, podcast. It releases in podcasts, but it also releases on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, give it a listen. Le- uh, John Schnepp was just a voice that uh, brought a lot of people together and made a lot of people really happy just because he, he was he was a sweaty. Yeah. He, he He's the original sweaty. Yeah, he's where I got it from, the sweaty. Every time we say we're going to get real sweaty about this one, that's us, you know, paying homage just- to, to, to John Schnepp. So. Schnepp yeah. sweat? Yeah, schnapp sweat. Schnapp sweat. Oh, I love that. That's Can great. we bottle it? We we might we might coin that for something. Yeah, we have to do something with that. Yeah, that'll that'll just be a little homage to John Schnapp. I like it. Schnapp sweat. That's, um, that's so, how we come up with stuff here, folks. Brought to you by <laughs> yeah, pop this, song. Is, this is how it works. Yeah. So to all the fellow John Schnapp fans, may we always be sweaty, and uh, may, we, may we always remember him uh, happily. And, and it's with a heavy heart that we announce that. Um, I don't do the moment of silence. Do you wanna? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Moment of silence. And there's your moment. There you um, so aside from that, we're going to start start off on kind of a bummer. Sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it had to be done. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to acknowledge it. Uh, aside from that, Raul, mm. how's your week been, man? Man, not too bad, man. Aside from that news, it, it's, it's been a week of, you know, getting getting through it with the wife. She's, you know, post-op now, so she's just getting used to being a lot lighter, lighter on her feet, I guess <laughs> you can say. She can get closer to walls and stuff? She can get closer to walls. Hugging her is a lot different. Uh... But she's getting through it. Uh, stitches are going to come out tomorrow. Part three of my Monday from Hell is resuming. Uh, oh, and God, we're recording on a Sunday. We're recording on a Sunday. We've been trying to do this shit for like six months. We've been wanting to record on Sundays because we wanted to record early and get out of here early. We started recording at the same damn time we that sure we recorded. <laughs> We sure did. <laughs> we accomplished nothing. Nothing at all. To our, to our girlfriends and wives at home. We're sorry. Whoops. Sorry. We really thought this was going to work out better. Don't worry about it. But yeah, man, she's she's recovering good. She's getting better. She's moving around, walking around. We actually went to the, well, we wanted to go to the beach today, but started raining, you know, typical Florida shit. So we just had some pizza and fried calamari. Pizza. Oh, very nice. Um, but the funny thing is, so this week, uh, my son is a heavy music person. I love that. I, I, am, I will take credit in him being a lover of music. Um, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but he likes a lot more Spanish music than he does American music. Now, his favorite, you know, American music is, you know, like Michael Jackson. Uh, he got into XXX Tentacion for whatever reason, but mm-hmm. he likes some of that music. Um, he listened to a couple Prince's, Prince songs. Uh, I got him into, before I even know they were Queen, I got him into We Will Rock You and We're The Champions and another one bites the dust. Didn't realize those were Queen songs. I still can't believe you didn't know that was Queen. We will get into that at a later segment. Um, but, you know, he's like, Dad, I want to go see Michael Jackson perform. And I was like, ah. Uh, yeah, nah, son, he's... Uh, Ooh, that boat is sailed, son. Boat sailed. He's I like, mean, I'm sure you go to find something in Vegas. Probably. Maybe. But, uh, so I had to explain to him he's, he's no longer with us You know that's why we have his music That's why he lives on And then he heard the, the Drake and Michael Jackson song So he looks at me like What what happened? How did Drake get it? I was like That's a whole nother level of stuff That you can't quite grasp right now See cause he doesn't have Puff Daddy So he doesn't understand sampling There you go Yeah There you go And then he, and then so he got into the XXX dude And unfortunately X was shot A couple weeks ago Shot and killed So he were listening to the song He's like Oh we should go see him I was like Ah oh. Man, yeah, oh. what are you gonna do? Introduce him to Bernie Mac next, you <laughs> <right>? savage. <laughs> so, <laughs> we got it. I got him into X before he died, and then eh, happened. I had to explain. He, you know, he's, so he started thinking everybody that he likes is dead. Oh, yeah, that's he's like, is so he likes his one of his favorite reggaeton artists is Osuna. Uh, for those who know who Osuna is, great. For those who don't, he's a reggaeton artist. Google him, he did a song with uh Cardi B, it's pretty good. So he listens, everything is Osuna. Like how I love Jay-Z and anybody from New York, Osuna is his shit. Okay. So he's like, so he he looks at me, he's like, can we go see Osuna? Or is he dead too? And I <laughs> no, was he like, to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah well, he, he, introduce him to Nirvana, see yeah, how that works oh, out. That's what I was thinking I too. I did yeah. actually today we were driving, I put on I put on um Teen Spirit. That's the only song I know. But I put on Teen Spirit and we were rocking out today. He was like, He's dead, right? I was like... <laughs> now he just assumes it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, no. Uh, he's like, <laughs> This oh, song go- sounds really depressing. He's yeah, dead, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, he's like, oh, let's go see him. I was like... I mean, no, he's like, is he alive? I was like, yeah, no, he is. This one actually is alive, and he's going to be in Florida in, like, September. 
So we're going to go take him to see Osuna just in case something happens. If nice. the music sucks, <laughs> that means they're probably still alive then, right? That, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what he was thinking that's what too. He's thinking, right? Because he hates... Uh, I forgot who it was. I forgot what song I was playing, but it was garbage. He's like, yo, oh, this person is alive? I was like, yeah. He was like, wow, that's that's crap, dad. I was like, first of all, watch your mouth. <laughs> like, no, but yes, he's alive. And I understand the music is not that great, but he's still making it. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, so we're going to take him to go see Osuna in September, probably, uh, just so he can see him, you know, because I've, I've never been a person to fan out for anybody. Like, yeah. But I think my son would be the one to fan out for this guy. Yeah. And he might just faint. Like, his shit's hilarious to Oh, me. like in the Man in the Mirror video for Michael Jackson? Yeah, man. All the people fainting? He might just faint for this dude. Yo, I don't know. Yo, I remember watching that Man in the Mirror video and just seeing, like, the footage of people being carried out in stretchers yeah. and people fainting. I thought we were watching the news. I thought it was... I was young. I was <laughs> I young, so I was like, what's happening? Is he killing them? Cause see, I, when I watched it, it was during... He, he did... um. It was like a movie that he had put out. Mm-hmm. Moonwalker. And, you, Moonwalker, you're right. Yeah. And it was during the Watts riots. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, that yeah. was on the news at the same time. So I was like, is Michael Jackson performing in Watts? What am I watching? <laughs> Are these people dying? Why is everyone dying in the Michael Jackson video? That's crazy. No, man. He's, I, it's crazy. And I like the fact that he liked, because he listens to everything Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Like, that's his ultimate right there. So to, to, to like, when I told him that when he, that he wasn't alive a while back, he really, like, took that, like, oh, damn. That's why I think he really understood what that meant. Yeah. Uh, because my like his grandmother, my mom, passed away. So he's, you know, I try to make him know of her. And, you know, she's in heaven or whatever stories we want to tell our children. And so every time he sees, his his question is, is this person with grandma too? Ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it, it, it goes that way. But like I said, I want to I wanna get him, you know, if he wants to see this guy, let's go have him see him before anything bad happens on your part. Because... We don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> we never know. This world's crazy. You never know. But uh, how was your week, man? Uh, my week was good, man. My week was good. We, um, we, uh, <laughs> I found out Annabelle gets mad at me whenever I don't mention her on an episode. So, oh. Hi, Annabelle. Hey. Um, <laughs> she'll actually be here next week in the studio. Nice. Because uh, it's her summer. It's, she, gets, uh, she goes to year-round school, so she gets a week off at the beginning of the summer. She gets a week off towards the end of the summer. So next week is her week off. She'll be here to, uh, to watch record. She's actually really excited for it. Cool. So that'll be fun. Be um, nice. the, uh, it, it's, been, uh, it, it's been a quiet week for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, Annabelle spent the weekend with her dad. Uh, which is cool. There's some some stuff coming up there, but uh, we'll bring that up in a later episode because it's probably gonna make for a good topic. Nice. Um, but she went out and she came back. Uh, she came back home today after spending the weekend. She had a blast. Uh, Herman Lorraine are just now getting out of Hotel Transylvania three, huh. and uh, <laughs> I'll let them review that next week. Yes, because <laughs> that'll be fun. Um, but then, uh, so it's been quiet on that front. Uh, last night, I actually met up with some army buddies who I haven't seen in a while. Well, one I saw a year ago, uh, the other one I haven't seen in 15 years since we got back from Iraq. So Lorraine and I drove down to Vero Beach and, uh, just kind of hung out, had dinner, traded, you know, talked about some old war stories. And Lorraine was just there the whole time, like mouth open, like, wow, (laughs) this is not something I talk about a lot. Yeah. So it was it was interesting. I, I guess it was interesting for her to to kind of like see this part of my history coming up, um, and then to meet people. I, I think she was really impressed with how she had met the one guy Nick, uh, but the other one Ray was my old platoon sergeant, and calling him Ray was a nightmare wow. because I used to call him sergeant. Matter of fact, I remember my best friend doing push-ups for about a half hour for accidentally calling him Ray. Nice. Uh, one of the sergeants was having some fun with him. Didn't he had no idea who what he was doing? He's like, "Hey, go up to Sergeant Marciano, ask him if he's seen Ray." Mm. And that was the last time I saw a Trout. I don't know what happened. Oh. I know what happened. Next time I saw him, he was doing pushups, and I was like, "Dude, what happened?" He's like, "Sergeant Marciano's first name is Ray." I was like, "Ooh, ooh better you than me." And I left. So yesterday, when I saw him, I got out of the car. He's like, "Hey, big guy," and I'm like, "Hey, sergeant." He's like, "It's Ray." I'm like, "Nope, nope." I saw what happened the last time. You're not gonna do this to me. <laughs> nope. I see, I've, with that. I've seen the end of this story. Oh my god. Um, but that was fun. It was really fun to see them and catch up. And, and uh, you know, for for all, all, all other veterans listening to this, if you have the opportunity to go meet up with somebody you served with, do it. Take the trip. Take make the drive. Yeah. It, it, it's worth it to connect. And, and it was cathartic because you know we all deal with our own stuff and. Uh, to talk to, especially that I was brand new. I was fresh out of basic training when I went to Iraq. 
Uh, I came out of basic training, reported to Fort Stewart, Georgia, and I was in Kuwait three weeks later. Wow. Um, so fresh out. And my, he was about to retire. Ray was. So, you know, to talk to him now, 15 years later, and get some insight into some of the stuff we did. And now I have a better, like a broader aspect because I know more things now. That was really cool. And I recommend every veteran, if you have the opportunity to do something like that, do it. Just because get that insight. I'm sleeping a little better knowing some of the things okay. that I know now that I didn't understand 15 years ago. That's cool. So that's very cool. Um, but since we're still, oh, this is heavy. Yeah, this is, still heavy. This is a heavy episode. Holy shit. God damn it. Well, world's not all unicorns, folks. Teach your kids. No, nah, for uh, real. <laughs> no, and I was telling you before that I do want to get into, I mean, whenever you feel, because I never, I never feel comfortable asking because I don't know how that shit makes you feel. So I never want to be like, so what happened? Because trust me, I have mad questions. <laughs> like, mad questions. Look, because I wanted to go, I wanted to go into the Marines after high school. My mom said no, because that's when shit popped off. Yeah. So she was like, no, you're going, you're, we're, moving, we're moving to Florida. So I was like, okay, that's not making it better. Yeah. More <laughs> Marines. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, so uh, I, I, at some point, whether it's on, on, on the show or not, I do want to dig into you a little bit about that stuff. I will say, and, and uh, Ray made a big point of it. We saw some stuff. We absolutely saw our fair share of shit. Mm. But compared to some other units and some other people, we had a relatively easy, uh, easy time. Mm. So I, it was. It, it's a lot of a lot of stories about burning poop. Oh, that's not a metaphor. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. We, <laughs> we we burned a lot of poop. I was like, oh. it's poop again. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, because I, I I only go off of like, what's that hurt locker and jarhead and stuff like that. So one thing I didn't realize this is there's a show that came out, Long Road Home, came mm-hmm. out recently. Um, that show was actually made about the unit who replaced my unit. Oh. When we left, they took over. And, and it was a direct. It wasn't like, oh, our division. No, it was like my company was 549th Military Police Company. We were in charge of this area. This other unit came in. We showed them around, and we went home. Well, that unit we showed around is what Long Road Hoban is based on. Okay. So I, I, did, I, I didn't realize that. And now I, I was interested in watching it. Now I'm kind of scared to watch it just because I was – not directly involved in some of the stuff they're talking about in the show, but from what my friends told me about it, they're like, dude, you're gonna remember some stuff. Really? Like, and stuff is gonna come up. It's gonna, and it, it does it hit you? Like I said, I don't wanna get it, but does it hit you like that or? You know what? I haven't been exposed to something like that yet. Okay. So I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant. I've been interested in watching it, but now that I know that it's like, dealing with stuff that I was, you know, I know and like areas that they said they did a real good job recreating these sets that took for a moment they thought they actually went to Baghdad to record oh. the show because they did that they did that good of a job recreating everything so that that'll be interesting I, I'll, I'll probably start watching it and see how it goes because be um, I've never I've never had that thrown at me like that before so that'll be cool that'll be interesting we'll we'll, we'll stream it live on YouTube man <laughs> your, your <laughs> here's my reaction reactions. video to the long road home That's it's crazy. gonna involve me crying a lot God damn. <laughs> I, 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 like I said, this, 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 there are some questions that I know. I, I know I got some other people got because you are, you are an army. You are a war vet. Yeah, you're a war vet. Like, I, real deal. You got bullet holes and everything. Like it's real. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's funny. Because <laughs> I downplay the shit out of it. Like, you it's do, like, yeah, me. You, you, you do. No, you know what? It, I'll give you. We'll, we'll go into story time real quick because we don't have much to talk about this episode. Oh. By the way, folks, this episode we had dedicated solely to talk about all the news that came out of Comic Con. Mm. It's gonna be a quick one, folks. Exactly. Um, so the first time I did stand up comedy was actually in Baghdad. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the thing. Most comics here then. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, first time I did stand, and it was actually because of Ray. He was my platoon sergeant, which means he was in charge. I was in a gr- platoon, which is a group of thirty people, and he was our boss. Mm. Um, he he is this. He's he's shorter, jacked up. Ray Liotta looking dude oh, nice. uh, but not Ray Liotta from like his softer movies Ray Liotta from like Goodfellas Good, yeah yeah like like scary Ray Liotta and he sounds a little he doesn't sound like Joe Pesci but his demeanor is Joe Pesci ish oh so one day uh, I'm, I'm I'm hanging out we're in the, you know we're in our little unit area and I had just messed up I was walking around with a box full of rocks uh, or, or, or the water bottle full of rocks That'll be another story. Okay. Uh, but I was, I, w- I had gotten into some trouble. I had this bottle of rocks that I had to keep on me at all times. <laughs> and I was still getting messed with pretty regularly because I had messed up. Mm. So 
Ray, at this time, Sergeant Marciano calls me into his office. I go in. I'm standing, you know, hands behind my back. He's this squat little Italian dude, leaned up on his desk, arms crossed. He looks at me and says, Alvarez, you think you're a funny guy? <laughs> no, no, Sergeant. Absolutely not. I've never been funny a day in my life. Those motherfuckers are lying to you. I don't know what they told you. I've never been fun. I've never told a joke. I don't know what that is. And I look back at my team leader who's behind me, and I'm like, Sergeant, help. He's like, I don't know what the fuck you did. <laughs> <laughs> you're stuck now, boy. I don't know what you did. Nice. So he looks at me. He's like, oh, for us, I think you're funny. Other people think you're funny. And I'm just like, I, I've got my eyes closed. I'm saying I'm an atheist at this point already. I'm saying a silent prayer. <laughs> I was like, I don't believe in you, but I swear if you get me out of this, <laughs> I don't know what's coming. He says, you know, there's a talent show on the base next week. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not next week, tomorrow. You know, there's a talent show on the base tomorrow. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Where are you going with this, Art? I want you to do stand-up comedy. I'm sorry, you want me to do what now? <laughs> I want you to do stand-up comedy. I, I don't... I don't, I don't know what don't. a stand-up comedy is. How do you do stand-up comedy? I don't know what that means. Obviously, I've been a fan of stand-up comedy. I just, I, it never in my life occurred to me to do that. Yeah. And he was like, well, I think you're going to do great. You're going to do it tomorrow. Get out of my office. And that was it. I was voluntold that I was going to do stand-up comedy. Yeah. And I, so what I did, and this I'm not too proud of, but it came back full circle. I had just got a brand new Carlos Mencia CD. Oh, you idiot. I memorized the funniest five minutes off of that album. And I went out the next day and did it in front of like 200 soldiers. Wow. And slaughtered. It was the best <laughs> experience I'd ever had in my life. No one knew who Carlos Mencia was at the time. Nobody recognized these jokes. So it, 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 that was you know good on my part. But I had a room of 200 people dying laughing. And I was like, this is great. Is this what a hot girl feels like every time she walks into a bar? <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I never want to stop feeling like this. Yes. And then we got home and five years later, I started doing stand up for real this time. Real. Like with my own material, my own jokes. My shit. Yeah. Um, and then I found out Carlos Mencia was stealing jokes anyway. So then I felt less bad. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, that's so that's that was my first time, folks. What was your first time like? Did it hurt? Was it bloody? Um, <laughs> did you have to tell yourself a couple of hard truths that you weren't quite ready for? What was it like, folks? Let us know. Yeah, give us a call. 321 <laughs> Please, please don't be so explicit or graphic on this. But hit us up on the Pop Sun Podcast <laughs> at, uh, uh, on Facebook, Twitter. Well, twi yeah, it's on Twitter mm -hmm. and uh, and Instagram. Yeah. Um, with that, let's get in. Let's get into this. And now, Jay and Raul with pop offs. First up, box office results. Kicking ass and taking names for the top spot this week is The Equalizer 2, bringing in $35 million. Meryl Streep and company never saw it coming as they sing their way to number two in Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, with $34 million. Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation, holds the number three spot with $23 million for a total of $91 million on its second week in release. Ant-Man and the Wasp shrink their way down to number four with $16 million for a total of $164 million. Rounding out the top five is Incredibles 2 with $11 million for a total of $557 million on its sixth week of release. That's box office. Uh, like we said, most of this episode uh, was going to reflect on Comic-Con, which went down this weekend. And uh, in all honesty, yeah, we ain't got a lot. Mm. Some trailers, some panels. Director got fired. Oh, we are going to touch on that in the later, later, later part of the episode. Yeah. But until then... Shameless plugs. Yes. I, yours truly, Raul, will be a guest on the Burn It Down show this week with J Flo, Dabs K, and Computer. Just want to thank them and uh, let them know that I'm grateful for the opportunity and looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, guys, for putting this on. We appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, also, you can catch me, Jay Alvarez, uh, at Gregory's Comedy Club in Cocoa Beach. I will be hosting for Eric Myers from July 26th to the 28th. Come have a few drinks. Have a lot of laughs. Drive safe. Absolutely. This is Raul. This is Jay. And this has been Pop-Offs.
It's time for A-Tracking. Jay and Raul land on track eight from some of the newest albums out to bring you a fresh take on music today. Yeah, welcome to 8-Tracking, y'all. You know what time it is. Surprisingly, this week, uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit. I, I, I've been pissing Jay off a little bit, right? Uh, no, no, you haven't been pissing me off lately. Last week was just a bad week in music. <laughs> it was. Um, we we want to switch it up a little bit. We want to, because there's there's a vast amount of music that comes out, but then there's sometimes that they ain't shit coming out. So we, what we want to start doing is this. I have a pick. Jay has a pick. And then we pick from like a legendary artist and listen to their very first album and see if we would have listened to them based off of track eight on their very first album. (laughs) So that's what we're going to do. This past weekend and how this came about this past weekend wasn't really much released. Yeah. Um, The only real release I noticed, and and I could be wrong, is the Internet. Uh, The Internet is a group. It's a collective. um, Al Gore brought them together. Most people don't know that. Al Gore invented the Internet. He sure did. No, but uh, they're 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 a different group. They ran. They they were affiliated with Odd Future, which was uh, Tyler the Creator's group. So a lot of good, a lot of great artists come came out of that group. Regardless of what people think, you know, Earl Sweatshirt doesn't really rap as much, but um, Tyler the Creator, even uh, Frank Ocean is, is pretty dope. They all were were a part of that collective. So the Internet is 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 a, is a group. I don't know how to put them as R and B or. Rap. I don't know where to put them. I, I, so, Alternative. I don't know where to put them. Yeah. So the song we listened to was uh, it was off a of hive mind. It was next time and humble pie. So it was kind of like a song with its own beat, uh, B side to it. Right. Um. I I kind of related it to like neo soul. Okay. Like that early to middle nineties R and B. Like I wrote down. Like it reminded me immediately of uh, like Les Nubians and Groove Theory. Groove Theory, I like. I, I told you, I listened to that one song way yeah. too much, like a lot, <laughs> a, a lot. Um, that song called "Tell Me" by Groove Theory, pretty dope. But yeah, um, I like that. I, I saw. So I, I listened to this. I saw somebody uh, mention it on Facebook, and I was like, "Oh shit, I like this group. Let me go ahead and you know dig it up and listen to it." I like the entire album. I play it straight through. I, straight through. I, I I really like that song, and mm-hmm. I'm definitely gonna go back and listen to it. I didn't like the B side to it when they went from. I, I liked next time when they went to humble pie. It kind of lost me a little bit, but I, I kind of caught back up towards the end of the song. Right. So I, I dug it though. I'm definitely gonna go back. I saw the album and I thought to listen to it, but mm-hmm. I was like, ah, I, I, I saw another band that I'm a fan of. We'll talk about next. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that, they just got put on the back burner. I'm gonna check this one out first. Yeah. But I'm happy you brought them up because now I'm definitely gonna check them yeah, up because I, I was probably gonna forget about them. You know, they're they're good and I've been listening to them. They they've been out for about six years. I, I started listening to them six years ago. Whoops. Sorry if y'all heard that. Six years ago, and um, they were good then. Like, and they were younger because there's the lead singer is only 26. Yeah, you know what I mean. So they were they were younger, and they they had a different type of sound. Um, it was more underground because nobody was really listening to them. That's that's still at a time where you still had to look for music. So their music wasn't readily available yeah. on like Spotify and shit like that. Like you really have to dig for it. But I really enjoyed the. You know, I like the lead singer's sound. I love I love the flow that she has. Um, they're good. They're yeah. really good. They're some chill music. And I, I listen to them, like I said, that album straight through. The first album I listened to straight through. They're really, really, really good. Yeah. I like, my favorite thing about them is the name. I like bands with fun, with like with names they can play with because they get to go on stage every night and say, we are the internet. Yeah. We're the internet. We are the internet. There's a band that I, I, I like a little bit. It's called What Made Milwaukee Famous. Wow. They're not even from Milwaukee. That's the best part. Of it. They're not even from. They're not even from Wisconsin. They're not even from. They're not even from the state. But they get to go up on stage every night, like, "Hi, everybody. We are what made Milwaukee famous." That's awesome. That's awesome. Like, it's fucking genius, yeah, no, <laughs> you bastards. Dope. Um, so since we switched it up, I actually contributed a song myself Ooh. because I'm tired of listening to crappy music. <laughs> um, there's a reason I stopped listening to hip hop and R&B in mass. I still have my artists. We've mm-hmm. talked about it, I, and I'm still impressed. Like the internet, absolutely impressed me. Yes. Um, so you know, I I I haven't sh- I haven't sworn off hip hop and R&B by any chance, but you you got to convince me to listen to it absolutely. nowadays. Instead, so what I'm doing now is I'm exposing Raul here mm-hmm. to to some of the stuff I listen to. Yeah. And we went with a bluegrass band. Mm-hmm. That's right. The brown guy said bluegrass. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, it's a band I'm really I'm a real big fan of uh, the Punch Brothers. Uh, the album was called All Ashore, and the song we played was track eight. It's all a part of the plan. W- w- what was your take on this? I like it. I like I like <laughs> I like the song. 
I like the song, but I when you because we played the track eight, um, and that was cool. I don't and let me let you put you people on between Marcel and Jay, they've exposed me to a whole other part of music that I've never even would have thought about listening to. You're welcome. Um, mm-hmm. no, yeah, yeah, anytime, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I like it, and I will go listen to this album because we played track four. Yeah, you, we played a few tracks on we this one. We played track four on this one, and that had like, it was bluegrass, but there was some kind of R&B feel to it. Yeah. Some, like a, some, like a, like was a track, note or two. Uh, yeah, it, it was track, track uh, yeah, it was track four, you're track right. Track four, because we played track four, great, loved it, loved the vocals and everything. Played track three, straight bluegrass. Straight hoot nanny. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hoot nanny, but I liked slapper. it, it was dope, it was really good. And um, again, people, this is, and this is a segment we're going to get into, a, like another, probably next episode, but it this, this type of thing makes me think like, you know, why was I only exposed to one sort of type of music? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was at the barbershop the other day, um, and we were having a conversation, and I was telling them who my top five was, and they were like, what do you, what, how was that your top five? I was like, I didn't really get into hip hop and all that till later. I was exposed to reggae music as a child. Yeah. Reggae and soca. So that's that's my main thing. Like, I would listen, I could tell you anything about reggae and soca and dance hall and all that. That's my shit. I don't understand why I was never really introduced to any other type of music because you got into reggae Lorraine I know you listen to this babe I'm gonna let you do it to Raul next week how are you in the sky cause you were mentioning um, uh, Smash Mouth earlier yeah 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 I was mentioning Smash Mouth um well I'm gonna be honest with you I'm not too keen on what the hell Sky is but I know it comes from less than Jake reggae I know it comes from Roots not, not Roots what is it called ah Rockers, not even it's not not even reggae. It's, it's reggae. from Rockers. It's sped up reggae, is what it is. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just take reggae and you speed it up twice as fast and you get ska. So so next week, since Lorraine's gonna be here, baby, I'm volunteering you for this. Yep. Um so she is huge in the ska to the point where I make we it's a discussion in our house very frequently. Mm-hmm. Um I, I'm not a huge fan of it, and that's a lie, I like some songs. But she is huge in the ska. That is her, her ska, if ska was an animal, it would be her spirit animal. Nice. Um so I'm gonna let her bring a bring a track eight next week for you. Okay, I'm with it. See with see it. how you get into that. Yeah. So baby, get ready. Yeah, I'm I'm with it. Like I said, I'm I'm very open to different types of music except for gospel. We had a discussion. I don't like gospel. We so. did. <laughs> um, and yeah, Punch Brothers, because you were talking about their R and B influence. Uh, they are very. Uh, I mean, they're definitely heavy bluegrass, but yeah. they also have a lot of tracks where they just they're they're in their thirties. They're guys. They grew up they, like the same in the same environment we did. Right. They listen to hip hop. They listen to rock. They listen to all this stuff, but they play bluegrass, and it comes through a lot. You hear that influence oh, in yeah. what they do, but oh, it's still yeah. a a mandolin, a banjo, a bass, and a jug. So you don't lose it. You know what I mean? You don't lose bluegrass, but you also get Other a really interesting... Enhances. Yeah, it's a really cool influence on them. Yeah. So that's really cool. That's one of the reasons I like them as much as I like. Do. I'm definitely going to go back and listen to, to that. And then I, I do... Every time y'all suggest, like, uh, night, uh, Marcel put me on the Nightmares on Wax. I love so Nightmares, Nightmares on, on Wax. Nightmares on Wax is really so good. I love them. You put me on to oh, that group that met each other in college. I forgot the name. Oh, uh, Lake Street Dive. Lake Street I love them. They're dope. So I, I people need to get into other genres. I don't like, oh, I only listen to this or I only listen to that. That's fucking stupid. You need to listen to everything. If you call yourself a music connoisseur, if you love music, then you love music. Yeah. There's no such thing as white people music, black people music. It's all music because check this out. It's all mostly black people music, by the way. (laughs) Up to and including bluegrass. Uh, Very true. (laughs) Very true. But what I'm saying is it's not just for for that type of skin to listen to. Yeah. It's for everybody. If you're because these artists, they don't see that shit. They don't I don't make music for them. I don't make music. I make music. Whoever likes it, likes it. That's it. Yeah. And Coming up you, on this, huh? yeah, I was going to say yeah. you caught a little bit of heat for for the for the icon track. Yeah, I said that's what we call it. This is the icon track of the week. Okay, um, there we go. You because you've been listening Yo, to this we band. We didn't even for, have a name for this. Yeah, it comes up on the fly. <laughs> I'm this good, baby. This is how I deal with the audience. Come see me at Co- at Gregory's Cocoa Beach. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we so our icon track of the week uh, is Queen yeah. off their debut album, Queen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Released in 1973, their track, their eighth track was called "Son and Daughter." Um, you mentioned that you've been on a little bit of a Queen kick lately. Yes, I've been on a Queen kick. Queen kick because of the so the trailer got released for the trailer part two got released for the uh, Bo- uh, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rhapsody movie. You know the Freddie Mercury movie. Let's call yeah. it what it is. Um, 
I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a listen because I'm already interested in seeing the movie, but I know I can get more interested or less interested by listening to the person's work. I have I was already in for, for the Notorious Big movie, of course. I was already in for the Straight Outta Compton movie, of course. Mm-hmm. Tupac, not so much, but way more than the, uh, the Queen movie. And that goes back to my point. I was already, I'm already invested in this because that's the music I was listening to. I'm waiting, waiting for a great Bob Marley movie. I don't know how we're going to get it. I don't know how they're going to do it. Ooh. But I'm waiting for a really good Bob Marley movie with real Jamaican accents. <laughs> Take Please. note, Luke Cage. Fucking Luke Cage. But no, so I've been listening to Queen. I started from out because I, I, I came to you guys like, Yo, what, what should I listen to? What should I listen to? Then I realized I need to just listen to them and get a feel with them for myself. So I've been listening to every single album. Um, uh, Queen, first album. Happily named uh, Queen, Son and Daughters. I like it. I like that whole album. I didn't skip a track. Um, I love Freddie Mercury's voice. Yeah. That's an understatement. But I love his... I, there's some songs, like Another One Bites the Dust, We Were Rocky and all that, I didn't realize was Queen. Because he's... blown away that he had no idea it was Queen. Because he switches it up. Yeah. He switches... Another One Bites the Dust, cause that shit could rock right now. It this does. Shit, <laughs> that shit's amazing to me. Do you love his mustache? I do. I do. I'm yeah, I definitely the, like Freddie Mercury with the mustache more than I did with I was Adam. talking yeah. to you about Snowfall. There's a fucking, there's a, there's a killer or, or I don't know, there's a character in there and they call him the Puerto Rican Freddie Mercury because he has the <laughs> Freddie Mercury mustache. That's awesome. awesome. But um, but no, he he his range, his vocal range is ridiculous. And I watched the, the Live Aid performance. Yeah. 24 minutes of just greatness. Yeah. Just greatness. I, 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 I was just sitting there in awe the entire time because this man is a genius vocal-wise. Um, he wrote a couple songs. Don't get me wrong, but it it I'm it only listening to all their work only got me more excited for the movie. However, I don't like Bohemian Rhapsody, the song. It's experimental. It's experimental and fucking failed because I'm tired of skipping the entire first half to get to the part I want to hear. You know this? So Bohemian Rhapsody wasn't the first time they did a song like that in movements. Think of it like you have to think of it like a symphony. Mm -hmm. Each each, the song has different movements. You have you know you have your first movement, your second movement, your third movement, Mm -hmm. and what they 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 were doing that stuff before. If you listen to Sheer Heart Attack, yeah, uh, they got a couple of tracks. I think it's like Tenement Funster, and it goes into like the next two tracks where it's kind of the same thing they start off with one tone but then it blends right into the next track and then it blends right into the next track Mm -hmm. if you're not looking at the track number changing you would think it's just one long song absolutely so it's not the first time that they did that bohemian rhapsody they just said this is just one song we're not splitting it up to two or three different ones which is doing this one um they should have split it up (laughs) that's my thing i I like the second half of the song the beginning i'm like all right come get to the fucking point see bohemian rhapsody is my favorite song in a car trip (laughs) because when we start road tripping that song comes up and i just start lip singing and acting it out while i'm driving scary as shit for the passengers in the car Mm. um (laughs) but i have fun with it um and it's like queen i've always i grew up with queen because my mom used to take us on road trips and it was always queen and steve miller band okay so that when i hear queen i when i'm on when i'm in the car that comes up and it's gonna stay up for a while I dig it. Um, and y- you were talking, and then you were talking about somebody was giving you crap, like why you listen to this white people stuff. Yeah. And then you didn't even realize I had to tell you, uh, Freddie Mercury was born in Africa. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, people don't realize his real name was Farouk Bulsara. Yes, it is. I've seen that. Yes. Yeah. And he was born in a he was born in Stone Town, Sultanate of Zanzibar, which is Tanzania. That's crazy. Yeah, guy was born in Africa, grew up in Africa, grew up in India. He moved to England until he was like a teenager. He did, yeah, about about fifteen, sixteen. Actually, when he was going to college. Yeah, yeah. So and he's yeah. and he's Parsi, so he's he's Arabic. I mean, he's he he's he's not he's not white, guys. Yeah, he's yeah. Not. He looks it. He it's looks not. the part. It's light skin. Yeah. Can, the, the racial draft. We're, we're choosing. We're choosing. For <laughs> I actually watched those kids. That's long ago. Like like a couple days ago, actually. Ah, I gotta love Chappelle show. Gotta love it. But yeah, man, that's I, I've been really heavy on on Queen for the past like six days, and yeah. I'm I'm I have my favorite tracks. I have my favorite album. Like I'm listening to it, and I'm putting my kids onto it. My son is more a lot more uh, influential, or or I'm more influenced by what I listen to than my daughters. They're like, what are you doing? My oldest. She, she's she's good. She's adding it to her playlist. Yeah. My middle daughter, she's like, I'm I'm not listening to this. Yeah, and it, it's a shame because we were talking about how music, if you listen, 
you were saying it too. Mm -hmm. If you really want to say you're a fan of music, you really got to go into it. And, and Queen, like Son and Daughter, honestly, I don't remember ever hearing that song before. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I remember hearing it. And it's bluesy as all hell. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong blues influence, but it's still Queen at the same time. But you get, like, people forget rock and roll and hip hop. You have, that's like the polarized, oh, that's white people music, and that's exactly. black people music. All came from the blues. Exactly. And blues came from ragtime. And ragtime came from slave music, mm -hmm. is what it was. And that's where a lot, um, uh, the banjo. Mm -hmm. Everybody relates the banjo to bluegrass. Well, the banjo was a gourd instrument that slaves brought from Africa. And little by little, it just evolved into the five-string banjo we play right now. Yep. So all, all that music, everything, when you go back far enough, it all has the same roots except for classical. Classical had a different evolution. Yeah. But, I mean, if you've ever listened to somebody, if you've ever listened to Fat Joe's song, because he likes sampling a lot of orchestral music, I'll give him that much, mm. um, you, you listen to it. Go back and listen to where your music came from because exactly. you're going to open your ears up to a lot of new stuff you might like. Yeah, nothing is new under the sun. I was... um. I was playing I subjected my kids to Ice Ice Baby <laughs> Ice, And I was like This is this." I said you hear this song I was like I, Don't forget what it is And who's singing it Listen to this song And now listen to Under Pressure by the Queen It's It's That He got that from them And yeah. I'm pretty sure Queen got that from somebody else I'm not about to go back that far But that's where he got it from Regardless of what he said In that interview That's where he got it from <laughs> you know No I mean? no See there Dun 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 We're Dun 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 dun. Shut up, white boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Shut it's, up. It's every nothing new under the sun. Listen to music. I I I get a Kanye album, and I look at the Kanye album and see where all the samples come from, and go back and listen to the samples. Yeah. Even the 444 album, that one yeah. the, the title track. And it's important to do that because yeah. if you don't, Kanye West brings out Paul McCartney, and people start saying, "Oh, I don't know who Paul McCartney is, but Kanye West just blew his career up." Exactly. I was like, um, no, you got it wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul McCartney was the one doing the favor. Exactly. People don't seem to understand, but no yeah, one folks, gets it. That's what it is. Listen to music, man. Listen to, and not just one genre. Listen to everything ex except for gospel. I'm not Expand doing your it. horizons. Hell, I'll even find German polka that I like if I listen to it long oh, enough. Oh, I'm not looking forward to that episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yada lady, yada lady, yada lady, yada lady, yada lady. Okay, I'm that's done. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, that's, thanks. That's I practiced. I practiced in the mirror this morning. <laughs> <laughs> You damn youngins get back here and stop running around this trailer park starting to ruckus. We gotta figure out what movie to sneak into this weekend. First trailer we're gonna talk about this week. Mm -hmm. uh, opening up is Teen Titans Go to the movies. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. It is. It is. Uh, it's based off the, the cartoon from Cartoon Network. Um, it is a show that is very aware of itself, very aware that they do not actually fight crime, very aware that they are not taken serious at all. Um, I'm surprised it's getting a movie, to be honest with you, but I, I guess it's a huge following. My son likes it. Yeah. It's a huge following. Um, I like the trailer. It poked a lot of fun at a lot of different things. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at it at all. The We all know that um, well, I don't know if you know, but the Teen, the Teen Titans, the comic book, and the show that used to be on was a very action-packed, very great show. Like, it was decent. Right. Not whatever the fuck this is. Um, I've watched this. It's very, it's a kid's show. Yes, it's very much very, so. very kid's show. But they're poking a lot of fun at, at the DC universe, at the Marvel universe, for that matter. It's, it, it's, it's a kid's version of Deadpool. Yeah, basically. A lot of breaking the fourth wall, a lot of, lot, lot of dumb references. Mm -hmm. My son watches it. So, yeah, I, I definitely know Teen Titans Go. Um, and it's funny. I like it. It's, like you, met, you said it. It's very tongue-in-cheek. Mm -hmm. they, they know what they're making fun of. They, they are absolutely 100% knowledgeable of what they do and don't do. Yeah. And it seemed like I was surprised, too. When I heard they were getting a movie, I was like, why? And to be honest with you, we, this is the first time I've seen any of the trailers. Yeah? Yeah, I haven't. Like, I've been shitting on a movie. Like, oh, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. This trailer made me want to see it. 
Like I'm, and it comes out this week, so I'm, I'm, I might be with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely, you, you, with or without the kids, I kind of want to check this one yeah. out. Yeah, and it, and and if you watch, because I've watched some of the shows, some of the uh, some of the episodes, some of the jokes in the trailer, you would appreciate more if you were to watch the show. The, the thing where he was like, "What are you gonna do? Annoy me with waffles?" They have a whole thing about waffles in the show. Like it's <laughs> fucking stupid. It's ridiculous. And the the icing on the cake, the cake is. Well, if Aquaman can get a movie, we damn sure can get a yeah. movie. That shit was great. I loved it. I, I definitely want to check it out this week. Yeah, no, it's definitely it, it's definitely self aware. I love all the I, I loved all the jokes that I saw in the trailer. Now I'm just hoping that that's not all the jokes in the movie. Oh yeah, that, like you know every other DC movie we get. Uh, well, you know what? Their animated shit's way better than their live action. It really is, and hopefully this t- keeps up. It's definitely something my son wants to watch. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's that's that'll be something to look out to. Uh, second one we saw, we we've seen the trailer before. I think we even reviewed it when it first came out. Yeah. But we're doing it again because yeah. it's coming out this week. Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah, man, I'm excited about it. This is um, again last movie was really great. Um, this is part six, want? isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. shit. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, say what you want about Tom Tom Cruise. I was about to say Tom Hanks. Say what you want about Tom Cruise. He, he he's doing well in these fucking films. This one, this franchise in particular. Um, yeah. Seeing him, you know, running and jumping off of shit can never get old. I love it. And the fact that he's doing a lot of his own stunts in this too. That's, Hurting that's... himself in the process because he did hurt himself on that on that helicopter shit. That we yeah, saw. he did. He did. He was stopped production for a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same. I have. We were talking about it off off mic. Uh, I there's a little bit of a stigma that comes with Tom Cruise because he's just the guy who married a woman who was a lot taller than him in Nicole Kidman. Yeah, oh, and yeah. then he jumped on Oprah's couch. Yep. Yeah, he disrespected that. Oprah's couch. It's like shaking Sinatra's hand. There's no coming. Once you do that, you are held. A in a light standard. Well not necessarily A higher standard When you shake Sinatra's hand You're held to a higher standard mm-hmm. When you disrespect Oprah's couch That's like Rick James Disrespecting uh, Dave Chappelle's couch <laughs> Or uh, um, uh, Charlie Murphy's Charlie couch Charlie Murphy Eddie Murphy yeah. So Good that's uh, But I'm definitely excited I have not been excited For a Mission Impossible movie Since the second one mm. And I've known That they've been good I've been I've had people tell me Hey these movies have gotten Because I think part three Was garbage Part, three was part garbage. two wasn't All that great part It just three had Metallica that's What's that? that? Part three was a cash grab. Yeah, and so I, I never really, I, I never really cared much about the Mission Impossible franchise. But I know the last movie that came out was w- really well received, mm-hmm. and this one, I mean, it is the movie that destroyed Justice League. We we announced that before because this is where Cavill had to get his mustache. And this is listen, Cavill looks good in this shit. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he does. I, there's one scene. There's one scene in the trailer where Tom Cruise is going toe to toe with Superman. Yeah. Now I know how I feel about it. It's Maverick versus Clark Kent. Yeah. And Goose is nowhere to be found. Goddamn right. Mm. Shit. Yeah, man, I'm excited for it. I might, I might, I might have to check this one out too. Uh, geez, my dad. Oh, my dad is coming in town this weekend. Hey, go take him to a movie. Yes, we are gonna go see that shit. I just realized that. Hey, hey, dad. <laughs> hey, pops. Ah. Uh, so we got the two trailers that can, uh, for the movies coming out this week. Uh, we are going to touch on some of the Comic Con trailers. Yeah, because something did happen out there. Yeah, those. those uh, couple trailers got released. We're not going to talk about all of these, but we, we'll run down them real quick, uh, and then we'll talk about a few. Um, so we had we got trailers for Glass, which is the third in the uh, series of the Unbreakable series. Yes, so we sir. had Unbreakable, Split, and Glass. Yes. Uh, then we have Shazam! Mm-hmm. Uh, trailer finally released after a lot of uh, lot of press lately that leading up to this uh, trailer right. release. Uh, we had Aquaman release a trailer officially. Finally, mm-hmm. uh, Godzilla Two, King of the M- King of Monsters. Um, we'll touch on we'll touch on not the trailer so much, but the little clip because yeah, they messed up, they sure and that did. deserves <laughs> that deserves being mentioned. Exactly. Uh, and finally, we got the trailer for Fantastic Beasts Two. Uh, it's Fantastic Beasts: The Crime of Grindelwald, uh, where we finally got our first really good look at Johnny Depp. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're, we're the Godzilla King of Monsters. The only thing we'll mention is that there was a teaser that was released the day before the trailer that showed Millie Bobby Brown mm-hmm. uh, at a CB radio, and in the background you see a damn camera with the cameraman. Yeah, they didn't even bother to edit it out. 
Not at all. They, it, like plain sight. Like I, when you saw, when you, when you told me about it, I was like, oh, there's something in the background. No, he's right there. He's in the trailer. Like he is the trailer. Yeah. Just- and if you if you haven't seen it, it's actually posted up on the Facebook page. Mm. Uh, go to the Pop Sun Podcast. I posted it maybe two three days ago, and it's on there. And I put it too. Like, can you spot the cameraman? Ridiculous. So let's play this a game. Like and share if you find him. Yes. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so, well, the first trailer we'll actually go into talking about uh, was Shazam. I can't say it without thinking Tyrone Biggums. <laughs> Did I miss the five o'clock free crack giveaway? Free crack. <laughs> um, so, first one is Shazam. Yeah. Uh, opening April 2019. Uh, Shazam, the title character played by Zachary Levi. 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 We don't know how he pronounces his last name. Yeah, we're not professionals. We're and uh, the child, I can't remember his name, uh, playing Billy Batson. Um, what were your thoughts on the trailer, Raul? So I like the kid. I like the kid. I like Billy Batson. I like whoever the kid's name is that's playing Billy Batson. Uh, I got a feel of the. Tra- I've got a feel of the, the. You know of the movie. Whilst he's a kid, he's an orphan. He's running away from families. He finally gets with his family, and him and the, the crippled kid become come sort of a, uh, best friends. Cool. Soon as he says Shazam and turns into Zachary Levi, I'm not. I don't know. I don't. I don't like his face. As I don't like it. I don't like his face. I don't like his haircut. I feel like he's it's it's, it's like the body doesn't match the head. Like it feels it feels weird. Kind of cartoony? Like super cartoony and I know it's supposed to be that way. I get it. It's not a, it's not a, but it feels like a parody. I feel like he's Ed Helms when he when he turns into Shazam and it's not supposed to be that way. Granted, it's a teaser. They're still probably working on some stuff. It feels like it almost feels fan made, almost. Right. Almost feels fan made, but again, it's a teaser. I'm willing to give it benefit of the doubt. It's not coming out till April, so we have a lot more to come. I want to see him with the with the with the bad guy. Remember Black Adam, the Rock that was cast as Black Adam right. eight years ago. He at some point they're gonna meet up, cause that's a bad guy for Shazam. They yeah. essentially have the same powers, but I'm not. I don't know. I don't. Maybe I just don't like the casting. Maybe that's it. I feel All like right. it should have been somebody else. I, I would have liked John Cena better. I think he would have done a, 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 a better job playing a big-ass kid. Because this, it, it, this feels forced. I can give you that. I can give you John Cena. I mean, the problem is if you put John Cena in a movie, you can't see him. <laughs> so you had to put someone that's actually visible. That's true. Um, the, Lorraine is laughing right now. I promise you. Uh, I I I just I like it. I I dig it. I think again, it's just a teaser, so we can get too much of a good look into it. But I think he played it off pretty well. There's a couple of things like there's that one scene where he's like, "What superpowers do you have?" He's like, "I don't even know how to pee in this thing." Yeah. You know, it, it, I think he plays it off pretty well because he's essentially playing Tom Hanks in Big. If you gave Tom Hanks powers, right? He he's a 14 year old stuck in a giant in, in an adult's body. So I I, I kind of like what I saw. I I just I think Zachary Levy, Levi Levy whatever I think Zach uh, is probably going to do a pretty good job with this. I hope he does at least. Um, I'm excited for. It. I'm just I'm excited for a DC movie. Don't take this from me. Okay. This I'm is all I've got. Back. With this is this is the last chance. Are you sure? Yes. There's another one. I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know, man. I, it's it, like 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 Marshall's, I, Marshall's playing it right now. Everything up until he says Shazam, I was with. I was with it. I'm cool with it. But then he turns into dude, and I'm like, nah, I'm not digging it. See, I I, I will, and and it's only because I I need to look past Aquaman. Mm. Because we finally got our trailer. James Wan has been bragging about he's making his movie mm-hmm. and the studio execs have kept their dirty mitts off of it. Mm. And what he's going to give us is a good superhero film. Raul, mm. how'd he do? Let me tell you something, man. It looks like beautiful shit. It looks like <laughs> shit wrapped in gold because it still stinks. I don't, I'm, it looks great. It, visually, I, I, if I see it, I have to see it in, in, in IMAX. It looks phenomenal. I just don't... I'm not buying Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Uh, He's nope. not... I, I, I told you we was, we was out there. I think it's another miscast. I think he would have been better off playing somebody like Lobo, if somebody knows who Lobo is. If you don't know, Google it. He he's a he's a He's a badass. He's exactly what Jason Momoa portrays in this movie. Right. And... 
I'm, I get it. Jason Momoa looks great. He's a he's a he's a very very good looking man. I get it. I don't have a problem saying it, but I feel he needs to play more of a villain role. Um, the CGI in this looks like shit. Yeah, it looks like shit. Don't get me wrong. I, I like the scene where he's in the aquarium and you know he's a kid and he's about to command all of the damn sea creatures to get on everybody. It looks like the live wallpaper app on my phone. It yeah. looks terrible. Um, hopefully it fixes it. No one DC, they're not. It's gonna remain how it is. What, whatever. I'm still interested in seeing how this goes down. But from this trailer, it didn't make me more or less excited for it. It just, uh, all right, this is happening. I guess right. I'll be there Christmas Day. Yeah, you you were talking about it, it looks it, the CGI looks bad. Looking at the shark, mm. uh, it looks like the shark from Deep Blue. Oh yeah, yeah with, uh, with LL, with LL well, and Samuel ate Jackson. Sam Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I ate, he ate me. A fucking shark ate me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, oh my it's God. my beer. Mm, <laughs> mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, I don't. Jason Momoa is, it looks like he's trying to be a smart ass. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like he's failing. Like he 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 doesn't have timing. His pacing seems off. He seems rushed. He he, he Jason Momoa is a guy that could say like the direction seems like it was. Hey, just stand there in this pose, look pretty, and try to be snarky. Yeah, and, and that's and it just looks like the CGI looks like every other issue. I, I, that's always been my issue with DCEU movies. The CGI looks like hot garbage. Mm -hmm. And I get it. They're not Disney. They're not rolling around in the same money that Disney is for this kind of stuff. But make it look better than 2005. Let me tell you something. The only thing that made me excited, me and the wife for that matter, is that we are now getting a full taste of what the Little Mermaid live action will look like. Ha! Yes, because she does have wildly red hair. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, the man, the man, Black Manta is the is the is the big bad in this. I don't like how they made him. He looks super cartoony. He looks like something that came off of um, what was it, the John Carpenter? Oh, John Carter of Mars. John Carter. There you go. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, did you not like that movie? No, 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 it was cool. Yeah. The John Carter was good, but this looks like something that came off of it. He looks like an alien. Yeah. Yeah, he, it doesn't look right. You know what? He like looks it. like the robot from Lost in Space, only with legs. Yes. Yeah, Danger Will Robinson? Nope, even better. He looks like, uh, oh, the original Power Rangers. What oh, was the name Alpha? of the robot? Alpha. <laughs> Alpha 500. Oh, he oh looks like God. Alpha. It looks nice. like they just spray painted the Alpha costume black and said, this is Black Manor. That's what it looks like. Zordon, Zordon, what are we going to do? Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, my God, you're right. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, I fucking hate that guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so is that Shazam? That's, that's Aquaman. Are you, are, you, are you excited? I'm excited for Shazam. I'm, I'm After seeing going, Aquaman. I'm, I'm excited for Shazam. <laughs> like, oh, my God, the Aquaman trailer. What do you think? I'm excited for Shazam. I'm holding judgment on Shazam until I see some more. Um, Aquaman, This listen, this is what we're going to get. Yeah, I believe everything is finished for this movie. It could have came out tomorrow. Everything yeah. is done. They just have to ramp up product, uh, 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 promotion for it now. I'm going to see it in theaters, in IMAX, because that's the only way I'm going to enjoy it, because it looks beautiful. But that's about it. Yeah. That, that's about yeah. It. Like, they, like, just like, like Jason Momoa. Yeah. yeah he's hey, it looks guy. good. He's, he's, he's probably, you know what? I'm putting that motherfucker on the goddamn uh, show art. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna click on it just for him. Yeah, we hashtag it. We're gonna get down double our downloads. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. God. Finally, last trailer we're gonna talk about: Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, opens up November 2018. Uh, this is the first one where we got a really good look at uh, at Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp and a good look at Jude Law as uh, as Dumbledore. Uh, Dumbledore. That's right. Oh man. Um. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this wizarding sequel? I'm fucking excited. Let me tell you something. I am a huge Harry Potter fan. I, I almost came over here in my Harry Potter pajamas. I have Harry Potter Ravenclaw pants with the house shirt. I don't want to hear shit. Ravenclaw Pride Day is coming. It's going to be amazing. Um, oh, Hufflepuff and no, such. No, no, no. I'm not Hufflepuff. We don't do those. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't disrespect me like that. Hufflepuff sounds like something you do when you sneak away from your parents to your girlfriend's place. Huh. I'm going to start using that. You know, Try to Hufflepuff it. your mom. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, no, man, I'm excited about this because so Harry Potter ended what 2011, 
And we haven't, you know, we, we've just been in limbo. The Harry Potter fans, they realized, hey, we have a lot of lore to work with. So they did more on the Fantastic Beast. Right. Uh, this, Newt Scamander's name was just a name on a fucking piece of uh, map in one of the Harry Potter sh- uh, uh, yeah. uh, I'm about to say episodes, but uh, movies. They created an entire world just off of that. Because he you know, wrote the Fantastic Beast book yeah. that they, they go through. Um, this... So the first one focused more so on him catching the beast and finding the beast. This one is focusing on a really big, important part of the wizarding history of the the, the biggest wizarding war of all time with Grindelwald. Right. I'm ex- I'm excited for this because it's going to include Dumbledore, and we all I don't know if you all know or not. Dumbledore is gay. Dumbledore is actually in love with Grindelwald. In the what is this in the trailer? Yeah. He says to Newt. I need you to do this for me in regards to Grindelwald because I can't. Because and I think that people yeah. people didn't understand why his sexuality was never explored in the Harry Potter books and the movies because it didn't it wasn't necessary. There was no need for it yet. Yeah. There's a need for it here. I can't do anything to him because I love him. That's a good reason to bring in his sexuality. Don't just bring it in for no fucking reason. Yeah. Hey, I'm gay and I'm gonna be gay. And just, I need you to know I'm gay. Ah, I'm gonna right, sit here. I'm gonna do gay things. Do gay I don't know shit. what that is. I don't even know no. what that means. <laughs> exactly. With this, his sexuality comes into play because he's he is in fact in love with him. Not on some friend shit. He loves him. Yeah. It's hard to arrest somebody that you love. Exactly. So he. That's why he brings in new. Or at least that's what they're they're pushing it towards. That's why he brings in new. Right. Um. I'm all the way cool with that. They act they, the way they started off is that they make you to understand that this is in the Harry Potter universe. He was in school and they were doing one of the uh the the ridiculous curse to make you think that you're scared of turning into something that you're not. Yeah. I like that. Um and and I, sp- I spoke with you uh, early on or last week or so talking about movies that we just get submerged into and just get carried away with when we watch it. Yeah. That's going to be my pick. That's our next episode. We're not going to get into it here because it's going to be a whole other four hours. Yeah. <laughs> but that's going to be my pick. Yeah. Harry Potter, I, I get into it. As soon as I see this, uh, this trailer and the stuff that happens at the end, I start immediately going back and looking at theories and going back at this and, and researching everything about it. And I'm like in it right now. Like, I just finished doing that when I, before I came here. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I'm i a little late to it. The first movie that I sat through and watched the whole thing in the Wizarding World were, was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Mm. Um, since then, Lorraine and uh, Annabelle have gotten me privy to, uh, we watched all the movies mm. uh, and I like it. I'm a fan. It, it was a nightmare to watch the first three because right. the kids and they can't act worth a damn. But once they got past the third movie, they got a little better and I was like, okay, this is good. Um, I'm... I, I don't know much about the lore. I don't know anything about the lore. I have oh. no idea who any of these people are. I mean, I know who Dumbledore is, obviously. Yeah. Everyone else is a mystery to me. You might as well be Bono from U2. <laughs> well, is Lorraine's coming next week? Yeah. We're oh, no. She, yeah, no. She's she's, she's she's all a titter for this one. Yeah, we're going to school you on this one. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm still excited for it. Even not knowing, like, the trailer looks really interesting. Yeah, and what man. little I do know, I definitely want to watch. Yeah, man. I'm, it's, it's, I... It's fantastic. <laughs> ah, ah. I, I'm excited for it. Um, this this is, like I said, me and my youngest daughter have Star Wars. Me and my oldest daughter have Harry Potter. So this is something that me and her are going to go watch before everybody on opening day and just go have at it without right. fucking robes and shit on. It's going to be amazing. Nice. All right. Well, that does it for the Comic-Con trailers. <laughs> Yeah, man, that does it for the Comic Con trailers. Let us know what you think of, of of what was released. Let us know if we missed anything because honestly, it looks like I feel like we have. Yeah, I no, feel like we have. I, there's no way that these are all the trailers that came out. I mean, we didn't talk about all of them. We know that, but I mean, we talked about three out of five. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, we realized Titans had a trailer come out. We didn't talk about it. No, there's a reason for that. Um, I, yeah. Yeah, but let us know what you think. Let us know what your favorite trailer was. Let us know what trailer you were waiting for, because I know that we were waiting for something for Venom and never got it. Exactly. So, you know, let us know what you were waiting for. If you were happy, if you're disappointed with what you saw, hit us up on social media. You can hit us at the Pop Song Podcast on Facebook, also on Instagram, also the Pop Song Pod on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Email us at nodadjokes at gmail.com. Bro, where can they leave us a voicemail? 321 405 2219. Leave us a voicemail, send us a text, shoot us some pictures. 
You can even hit us up on WhatsApp. Just add us, and you can send a voice note. That's for our, our overseas listeners, because we have them. Oh, yeah, we yeah. do. Yo, shout out to our yeah. friends and German listeners. I don't know how to say it in your language, but you'll get it. You listen yeah. to us. Merci. And, uh, oh, damn, uh, bitte. There we go. Yeah. yeah you cultured it. motherfucker. Um, also, while we're on this, huge thanks to all of you. We, uh, you know, we we obviously look at how many downloads we, we get because that's that's how we convince Brevard Nursing Academy to sponsor us. Facts. Um, and, and it's also good, you know, just to know that we're not wasting our time here at Ghost Academy Studios, uh, just, you know, dicking around. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who have listened to the show because our numbers have scared without you our numbers are high and they are higher than they've ever been and that is thanks to you all yes uh, for sharing us for giving us to your friends I know my son's got three of his friends listening yep my brother um, does it my daughter does it yeah I, I appreciate all that everybody who's, who's ever sent it to anybody we appreciate you yeah all the people that engage with us on the Facebook page we hope we get more of you uh, engaging with us thank you all so much just for for giving us getting us out where we are it's, it's kind of surreal to see this yeah yeah. Grow from what was it? We were on YouTube at yeah. first, yeah, with like three or four no, views. No, we weren't on YouTube for. We were in the break room. <laughs> we were in the break room. We were in the break room. Yeah, <laughs> with <laughs> with coworkers walking by. Yeah, uh, this this last episode we just released hit over. Uh, we don't like to talk numbers. We don't brag. We we ain't got no numbers to brag about. Yeah, but we we had the most one day downloads of a single episode on this last one. Yeah, so th- that's cool to see. We are growing. It's 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 exciting. Yes. So. Thank you guys from the, you know, those who have been with us from, you know, day one and those of you who are joining in and liking what you hear and you stay with it. Thank you all so much. We appreciate that greatly. Um, Next up, we're going to put somebody in the goddamn corner. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Sit your five dollar ass down before I make change. Okay. (laughs) So this week, Mm. this corner. Yeah. Gotten pretty colorful. (laughs) Um. Takashi 69, bring your ass. Whoa, hold on. You can't bring it down. Uh, uh, will your ass down. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, so, uh, so uh, here's, here's a rapper. I, I'm, I've been vaguely aware of his existence, uh, but headlines are today that he got uh, beat up, mm-hmm. robbed. Pistol whipped. Pistol whipped. Kidnapped. Kidnapped, yeah. Yeah. Like some straight up Colombian shit. Um, yeah. yeah. No. So Takashi 69. Uh, the the <laughs> rainbow. No, 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 no. Takashi six nine. Whatever the fuck. Look, <laughs> look, man. Look, when you when you dress like a skittle, uh, you don't get to be picky. True. Okay, the the M and M's are more famous than he are, than he is, and they come in the same colors. <laughs> and if anybody tell me, oh, you say M and M's more famous, go to any other country and ask them who Takashi six nine. I don't even know his name. Sixty nine, six nine, whatever the fuck. Six nine. Yeah, and and show me an M and M. Guess which one I'm gonna recognize first. Oh my god. Mm hmm. He, he his. I mean, I've I've never. I can't I can't co-sign anything on this. Mm. I can't. Um, my I, I I had some really messed up uh things to say. Things I'm not exactly proud of. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, I'm gonna let the Brooklynite go first. Yeah, he is from Brooklyn, isn't he? God, damn. Yeah. He is. oh, you, no more Gucci game, Gucci game, Gucci game. This one, yeah, aren't you? yeah. You got oh, rainbow God. ones too, motherfucker. Well, Daniel Hernandez, <laughs> oh, God aka damn it. Six Nine. Yeah, man, beat up, pistol whip, kidnapped. Uh, he was coming from a, a video shoot of some sort in New York. Um, not sure what it was for. Uh, he has. Uh, he says he's eight for oh, seven for seven on the Hot bill, Billboard one hundred or two hundred. Because all his songs have hit the Billboard. All of them. All eight of them that he's put yeah. out. And it, well, that's cool. It's a nice little feat. But he's one of those that's... Uh, he, and it, he came up with the term chasing clout or clout chaser. He wants. He's looking for all the attention. He's getting all the attention. He's doing everything possible. Oh, he's saying clout chaser because he doesn't like attention whore. Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. And it's ridiculous. He, he, his videos range from him telling everybody in their mother to suck his dick for uh, from him saying, uh, oh, I did this. Uh, he's been beefing with Chicago rappers. We all know Chicago rappers are real niggas. Real. Yes. Uh, he goes to Chicago and says, I'm out here. It's 10 o'clock at night. None of y'all niggas is out here. Which in that's really weird that he because was out there. Because 10 o'clock is still early, son. It is still, but they, he, he went there and came back to, hey, see, nobody touched me. He goes to California, you know, if you're a blood, he claims to be a blood. I don't know mm. if he is or isn't. That's none of my business. 
but he goes out to these areas and, and the gangsters in the area are like, yo, you got to check in. And he's like, yo, I ain't checking in with nobody. I was, and they're like, all right, well, you gonna, you might get touched. They still haven't touched him off of that. So me seeing that he's getting kidnapped and pistol whipped and all this other shit, I don't feel bad if this is, if, because I don't think it's true. I think it's all promotion because the video that we just watched, when did that come out? Seven hours ago. That's all promotion. I don't believe he got... I, I believe he staged all of this. In my opinion. I believe he staged all of this picture, wherever the fuck he's at. None of that shit's real. I don't believe any of it. Because he's a one big troll. Internet troll. That's what he does all day. Yeah. That's what he does all day. You remember that time when 50 Cent took out Rick Ross's baby mom because they had a little beef? Oh, yeah, yeah. He did that with uh, Chief Keef's baby mom. Took her out, bought her stuff, spent like 75 racks on her. Uh, and then you know did, did did the whole thing and people were comparing him to Fifty. My thing is, Fifty, yeah, Fifty did some shit back in his day. And if Fifty had yeah. a fucking Instagram, Snapchat, and all that, we would have seen some. Yeah, of people say, well, Fifty Cent mumbles. Fifty Cent mumbles because he was shot in the mouth. Exactly. Yeah, he 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 has no choice. Yeah. But with this kid, man, I, it's it's not a guy that I want any of my kids looking up to or anything like that. My, now the music itself. Again, I'm I'm the type that is able to separate the art from the artist. I'm not calling his music art by no means, but I've listened to it. I've 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 wrote out to this to his music. Gummo is one of my favorite tracks. Uh, uh, my wife actually today that Fifi song that with Nicki Minaj. My wife was like, "Oh yeah, I want to hear the new Six Nine and 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 Nicki Minaj." I was like, first of all, how do you even know about that?" But um, we listen to it. it. I don't like it, but it, it's, it shows him and he's he's sounding different. He's not screaming like he is in normal, normal tracks. But listen, man, he had this one coming. Yeah, he had it coming. Yeah, uh, you you can only call out so many people so many times mm -hmm. until someone shows up at your driveway, pistol whips you, throw you in the back of the car, robs you, mm -hmm. and, and and essentially. <laughs> I mean that that's that's according to one story, that's how it happened. Right. They showed up at his house when he was coming home from a video shoot at like three or four o'clock a.m. Mm. Uh, beat his ass, threw him in the back of the car, robbed him, and, and then kidnapped him. They, according to according to sources, he had a run at like he he jumped out of the car at one point. Exactly. Yeah. And, and jumped into someone else's car. Yeah, he said like, he jumped into a stranger's. Uh, some random scene. person's car. Like, yeah. oh my god, help me please, help me please. And the guy just like drove. Um, and called 911 and then said, get the fuck out of my... Like, got him to an intersection, said, get the hell out of my car, an ambulance is coming. Yeah. Um, so, see, what happens... See, now, here, here's where my messed up mentality... And look, I don't wish death on anybody. No. I no. don't. It's not a good look. I'm sure he's got family. I'm sure that loves him. Apparently, he's got a kid. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I, don't, I don't wish death on anybody. But come on, man. You couldn't live up the real image? You couldn't die like a real rapper? Oh come on. God. You couldn't do like Tupac? Couldn't do like Biggie? Hell, Freaky Ty got touched. Oh, my All right? God. You taking it back. Yeah, I did. I did. Big L, what happened? You're not man enough to commit? 6'9", 69, 69, Rainbow, whatever the fuck your name Rainbow is. Rainbow Rodriguez. Yeah. I can't. Rainbow <laughs> Rodriguez. <laughs> That's, I don't know Yo, what that's I his new that. name. Rainbow Rodriguez oh is how we God. refer to him in this house from now on. Oh, no, shit. anywhere the pop song goes, it's Rainbow Rodriguez. That's I'm calling right. him out. Make a vine about me. I don't care. Um, <laughs> this is going to end up on K Slate. Watch. It's going to get me. Rainbow I, we, Rodriguez. Listen, I, again, I don't wish death on the guy. But, you know, I, I hope. I, I hope it's not a troll. I, I mean, like it's it's. I don't. I hope it, it didn't actually happen. I hope but it I also, is a troll. I hope it is a troll. I hope it's a troll for his sake, and, and, and you know, like I mean, really, I, I I wish him the best of health. I I, I don't like his music. I don't. don't like and it's not because it's some like ill, violent gangster. I listen to that stuff too. Yeah. I just I don't like his music. Um, but I mean, I, I I wish him the best of health. I really do. I hope he's okay. I hope his family's all right, and I hope he comes back. If this is real, now if he's trolling everybody, no, screw him. Yeah, fuck. Because him. that's that's not that's that's just now you're just being a dick. Let me say something. If this is real, I hope he learns from it. I hope yes. he's like you sit your. No pun intended, but sit your ass down now. Sit your ass down. Like relax. Yeah, like, we're putting you in a corner for your own good, got, kid. Yeah, you've got a hit record, so to speak. Keep making music and shut the fuck up. Don't yes. do anything more. Run. And move out of the hood. Know when to get out, man. Yeah, man. You're doing shows. You're getting money. Priority one, get the fuck out.
Yeah. Get, get out. You, get out. Get your family out. Get your kid out of that. Yeah, man. It's, All right. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And, and putting your kid in that type of danger, come on, man. Yeah. All you're doing is making your family a target. Exactly. And that's you, not cool. I mean, they showed up at his house. At his house. And that, that first, yeah, you don't, you, or any real gangsters know, you don't even, you, you want, priority one is get the fuck out the hood. Yeah. Get out of Taj. Get out of, get where you cannot be touched. Especially if you're if you're walking around doing all this shit, he's overseas and you're leaving your family here. People know what you, now you know that people know where your family lives. Yeah, you need to get them the fuck out of Dodge. And and, and, and just relax. Yes, like you don't need to call people out for no reason. Yeah, it's chill. Like, dude, nobody needs to do that. You, do your you music look, and quit and quit it. Yeah, you you making music. You you got an opportunity to, to do something, and you just just do that, man. I look, I'm not a fan, but other people obviously are. Yeah, man, you got a following. I don't like the rainbow chiclet grills. I don't know what's this going on weird. with that. With the vampire it, teeth. I don't I don't get it. I, I don't get it. And that's fine. I'm old. I get. I I will cop to that. Yeah. This is a generation that I don't understand. When it comes to that rainbow hair and the grills and, and tattoos all the, on the face, yeah, well, I mean Tyson started that, but yeah, I mean it's just didn't like make it good. I, yeah, didn't make it good. Yeah, it doesn't. I just, I, I mean, look, whatever. You got a fan base. You got an opportunity to do better. Do better. Man, come on. And you from Brooklyn, so I, I really don't care because you're not from Miami. You ain't a little pump. But I mean, <laughs> Hernandez, come on, dude, you my peoples. Yeah, be better. Do better. Get, get take an opportunity to get the fuck out, man. Please Le- learn from the rappers that did die from this shit. Seriously, seriously. You, there's you, no, there's no, there's no, there's no good ending in what you're doing. No, and, and I know I was, you know, saying some messed up stuff, and you know, apologies to anyone I offended on that. I, I mean, I get it. This is jokes, people. Yeah, these, these, this is just entertainment purposes. Calm I, I don't, I don't actually want him to die. I don't think he should have committed and actually died. Mm. Uh, Freaky Todd, Lost Boys is one of my favorite rap groups <laughs> out. Um, but no, like seriously, kid, Daniel, and I know your name's Daniel. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I know your name's Daniel because your mom told me to be quiet before he woke you up. Um, <laughs> sh- you're going to wake up, Daniel. Um, no, no. Like, no, son, just just relax, man. Just play just, it safe. Yeah. Play it smart. Not even play it safe. Just play it smart, man. Exactly. You, you, were, able, you were able to finagle your way into a music career. For real, man. You obviously have some... Level of thinking mm-hmm. to get there, that because that doesn't happen by accident. That happens with hustle. Exactly. So just keep it. Just make good choices. But it's the same thing I say to my kid and my friends' kids: make good choices and do good things. Please. That's all we ask. And most of all, sit, sit your, your ass, ass down. down. What's going on, Pop Song Nation? This is your boy Raul of Pop Song, and guess what? Your favorite dad's got a new number, new phone. Who this? Yeah, man. You guys can reach us at 321. Why is it ringing already? This call will be recorded and monitored. I have a collect call from. Hey, I got a dad joke for you guys. What? What does a snowman eat for breakfast? An inmate at a San Bernardino County. Bro, who do we know in San Bernardino jail? Oh, shh. How did he get this number? Anyway, um, yeah. 321. 405-2219. What the fuck is going on now? Hello? Okay, yeah, listen, I'm ready to come pick up my two pies. I nice. want everything on it. Whoa. No onions like last no, time. No, no, wait a minute. Stop, shit. stop, stop. Now, Who do you think you're calling right now, dude? I'm looking for Sal's pizza. This is not Sal's, dude. This is Pop Song. Pop Song? Yeah. In Florida? Yes. You gotta be kidding me. Yes. I love you guys. Oh, okay. This is incredible. Yes. Rob, it does sound like you. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. All right, you know, get on that Twitter shit and tell them to release the S already. Will do, partner, will do. All right, listen, take care. Peace. Let me turn this damn phone off. Listen, 321-405-2219. Call us, leave a voicemail, send us a text message. We definitely want to play these voicemails of your best dad jokes or your topics on the show at some point. 321-405-2219. That's Pop Song. You guys have a great day. So earlier we mentioned uh, that uh, during the Comic Con festival weekend, festival, yeah, yeah. The, during Comic Con weekend, uh, the news broke that James Gunn, uh, director of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise in the MCU, uh, was fired. 
Uh, now, what had happened was uh, somebody had resurfaced some old tweets. And when I say old tweets, I don't mean tweets from like a couple of weeks ago that went unnoticed. I'm talking about one tweet was from like 2009. Yeah. A uh, couple other tweets were, were, some were a little older than that. Uh, none of them recent. No. Absolutely none of these were recent. Uh, I think the most recent one was pro- was um, uh, it was a tweet for At Midnight, which yeah. was a Comedy Central show that had a segment called Hashtag Wars. And they would open it up to the public and you could, you know, the, it would give you a subject like hashtag. And I think this one was hashtag um, bad children's books yeah. or scary children's books. And it was something involving pedophilia mm-hmm. and, you know, obviously in bad taste, but that was the point. Yeah, it was and it, just part of the show. Yeah, it was part of the show. And it, honestly, I'm pretty sure that that would have won him the, the game that night because it was yeah. a pretty good one. Um, but yeah, he had a lot of tweets come out uh, that were resurfaced. A lot of them were, you know, involved pedophilia. A lot of them involved rape. Um, and it was making light of it. They were they were jokes. I mean, they were very obviously written with, you know, in a joking intent, with a joking intention. Now, that doesn't take away from... The severity of the subject matter, absolutely, especially everything that's going on now with the Me Too movement and stuff like that, that's not to take away anything from a victim. But you do have to look at context. Yes. Um, and you know, we we've you know looked at the tweets that you know that were brought up, we've looked at the situation, we've looked at some of the backlash that's been coming up, some of the reactions to this. Uh Ro, Start us off, man. And well, before we go there, so what the the way we're tying this in, what we want to do is, how do we teach our kids to make choices that won't come back and bite them in the ass later? You know, how do we set them up for success now so that later on they don't have to play defense? Right, right. Um, again, I, in my opinion, I think it's bullshit because these are ten year old tweets. Yes. I am not the same person I was ten years ago. Ten years ago, I was twenty. Yeah, I am completely different from when I was then, um, and if you, I don't, ha- I had a Twitter back then. I d- deleted it a long time ago, but if you were to go back and read my tweets, none of it was good. Yeah. It was all, it was all, dis- it was all misogynistic. It was all d- disgusting. Not nothing, nothing pedophilia. Like that's that's not that's not what I mean. But like it's 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 crazy to think that somebody took the time to go way back and 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 look at it, and that goes to show you, hey. The internet keeps shit forever. Yeah. Forever. My kids, 16, 12, 5. Mason doesn't have any kind of internet things yet. He has... I I post pictures and videos of my son on a specific hashtag on Instagram. That's the most he's gotten, right? My daughter, my eldest, and my youngest at this point has, you know, Instagram and Snapchat. And they, they post. They do things. Granted, nothing too crazy yet, but what I explain to them is... I don't care what you post because it's you. It's not me. But just understand that these things live on the internet forever. Ever. Uh, don't matter if you delete it. Somebody will find it. Or somebody has it. Somebody has already screenshotted it and you will be, you know, you will be held against that. Yeah. No matter how long ago it was or not. Because, again, 10 years ago, whatever he tweeted or whatever he was saying, somebody took the time to really scroll that fast. And that, not that, that fast, but that, that far back. Who knows how long they were trying to get this out? And that cost the man everything. Because he wasn't just the Guardians of the Galaxy director. He was about to head the cosmic uh, portion of the MCU. Yeah. That And that's a whole... I just thought about that. That's a whole other theory we got to get into. Because if he was about to do a whole cosmic entity, we, are, we already know some, some shit's about to go down in Phase 4. But that's yes. neither here nor there. So I got to teach them, hey, you, watch what you say. You know what I'm saying? If you don't don't send nobody no inappropriate direct messages. That's DMs. If you didn't know what DMs meant, <laughs> um, uh. don't send nobody any kind of videos that's supposedly just for them because it's gonna get out. You know what I mean? Don't don't send these pictures. Don't don't do any of that. It's going to get out. This is the age of the internet. We are all. Er- My car is connected to the internet, so everything is connected. Everything is connected. If you think that whatever you we got, we have the Google Home in the house. You can't tell me we ain't being watched by the CSI, CSI, CIA, whatever. C- the yeah. alphabet boys. <laughs> you, you being watched and listened to. So it, everything, you have to move with caution when you're on these internets. Yeah. Right? Because it, it's it's going to come back. If it's bad, it's going to come back no matter what. Case in point, I remember when I was heavy in, into Twitter and 
me and my boys start, we, you know, I was we went to a couple shows and we seen a group performing. <clears throat> seen a group performing and I tweeted, look at this bullshit. I can't believe I'm here watching that. Okay. Well, fast forward two years later and I'm now in photography with my boy and that tweet comes up. They're like, so, well, remember when you tweeted this? Of course, I had to own up to it. Yeah. But it took, that kind of had us start off on a bad foot when we, we wanted to work with them. Right. Or they wanted to work with us. So, you know, it took a while. It took a lot of explaining and things like that. You have to understand this was back then. I was younger. I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly giving my opinion of what was going on. Um, I don't feel the same way. Like, I had to, like, backtrack and do some shit. I don't, I didn't want to do all that. Yeah, I ain't want to do all that, and that it happens, it, and that was only two years difference. Granted, I mean, thankfully they, you know, you know, they were, you know, they were cool about it. We still we worked together. We made great things together. That's fine, but that could have went any way, right? You know what I mean? It's not you. You have to watch what you say to people, to to companies, to whatever. Use the internet for the good that it has. Right. That's all you can do, because if 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 you. And it's, I swear, it's bullshit that he got fired for the 10-year-old tweets. But it doesn't negate the fact that, yeah, they were... They're out there. They're, they're out there. And they, he, they like, the whole... Oh, what's the shit that we just did last week? Papa John's? How did they yeah. give any context for that? Yeah. They didn't give any context for these. And clearly, they don't care about the context. Exactly. They don't. And uh, so I'm, I'm of a couple <laughs> different minds on this. One, it sucks. Like I, I'm pretty free with what I type. On the internet mm. uh, But I'm also Not typing stuff That I can't take I'm not typing anything That's gonna get me fired From my job mm. uh, Now or ever You know I, I, I'm, I'm not that out there But I do hate that Somebody is getting penalized For something that he said 10 years ago In jest Cause you can look at these And tell immediately That these are jokes mm. Lorraine was reading them When I found the tweets I showed them to her She laughed at a lot of them And the ones that she didn't laugh at Isn't because they were Too deep or too real It's just cause they weren't That funny Exactly So and, and she read it Not knowing the story i was just like hey check these tweets out she had yeah, no she idea, idea what, yeah yeah we didn't tell i i'm really filling around the whole thing what was going on um so it, it's you know it, it sucks to get fired for those and one of them like i said obviously a hashtag war so that was the point was to be you know like Discussing gross and over like that that was the goal of it that's what he was doing that's how you win. and you can't hold him to another standard when everybody on twitter is doing the exact same thing and you didn't know who james gunn was in 2009. Yeah, I didn't. No one had any idea who the hell he was. It's just because he's a face now and it's starting to come up. And so I'm of, I'm, I'm of a mind that he shouldn't have happened. I'm also of the mind that this is Disney and Disney does not play. They don't play. But then I found something else out. Oh. Uh, because a, a friend of mine posted something on Facebook. Ha <laughs> uh, Shout him out. Uh, it was, so uh, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, Chuck, shared Bobcat Goldways uh, uh, tweet. Uh I'm gonna read that if I can find it. Hold on, because I have to. I have to look back for it now. Um, but Bobcat Go with basically came out. There's a lot of celebrities coming out, sticking up for James Gunn, including yeah. some of the women who spearheaded the Me Too movement. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the women gave an interview to Entertainment Weekly about the entire. Um, excuse me. Uh, uh, about the you know the whole the the rape culture we'll call it, yeah. uh, or the sexual you know sexual abuse culture that was going on in in Hollywood. And she came out and said directly, like, James Gunn is one of the good guys. Like, he should not have been fired for this. And she started passing around a, uh, she, she started passing around a, a petition yeah. that's already got a little over 60,000 signatures on it to reinstate and rehire James Gunn. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I do have to keep, there we go, I think I found it now. Um, so, you know, you have to keep in mind that context is a big deal. And when people yes. are sticking up for the guy, you, you can't remove context from it. What was the point? Does he really believe this? Does he really think that? Or are these just things he was writing because he was trying to be funny on the Internet like literally everyone Everybody. else? Um, so Bobcat Goldwith came out and uh, said, I I'm going to read it quote for quote, the, uh, word for word. I love James Gunn. He's a loyal friend, super talented, passionate and kind. I wanted to say something. Here it is. Dear Disney, and he added Disney, uh, I would hate for you to come off as hypocritical, so I'm suggesting that you remove my voice from an attraction that's coming to your park. It's called World of Color Villainous, and I reprise the role of Payne, who I played in Hercules. You see, here's the deal. 
Years ago, I made a lot of sarcastically shocking and offensive jokes. Bobcat Goldwith, by the way, is the guy who came out on USA Network wearing a tutu and a cowboy hat. Yep. Okay. Um, back, to, back to the quote. Uh, I made a lot of sarcastically shocking and offensive jokes. Many that I'm embarrassed about now, and I'd hate to make you guys look bad, seeing that I'm openly critical of the president and his administration, and you seem to be taking your lead from some of his radical fringe supporters. We have no take on that here at Pops On. This is just the quote. Yeah. Um, continuing, I think James Woods may have recorded a voice for this new attraction, too. Why not check out some of his wacky past tweets? They're a hoot. Oh, yeah. For the record, I do stand with survivors of sexual abuse, and I was wondering if you guys are still making money off of your movie Powder, asking for a friend. Thanks, Bobcat. End quote. <laughs> so I remember the movie Powder. Yeah. Powder was released over Buena, uh, Buena Vista Productions, which is Disney. Uh, it was about an albino kid. Uh, Jeff Goldblum was in it. There were it was a, it was a weird movie. I was too young to really get what they were talking about, but uh, I, that that raised an eyebrow because I, I I saw the Powder reference. I'm like I'm missing something here. I don't know what's going on. Turns out the director for Powder, Victor Silva, also responsible for the Jeepers Creepers franchise, directed all three of them, wrote all three of them. Explains a lot. Uh, Victor Silva uh, directed and wrote Powder in 1995. Uh, however, in uh, 1988, he was convicted of pedophilia and child abuse. Wow. Uh, had child pornography, uh, pleaded guilty to lewd and lascivious conduct, oral sex with a person under the age of 14, and Jeez. procuring a child for pornography. This is a man that did this in 1988, pled guilty to it, served a year in prison, and in 1995, Disney hired him to make a movie. However, James Gunn put some tweets out 10 years ago, didn't actually hurt anybody. Actually, most people are vouching for him and his character. Mm. But he gets fired. Damn, man. I hope Disney donates all the money that they made off of Powder and starts giving that to charities because that's exactly what they need to do. Or say, hey, we may have overreacted. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and back step, you know, step, take a step back, which is exactly what James Gunn has done and said, hey, listen, I wrote these at a different time in my life. Exactly. Man. I'm not this person anymore. Yeah. I have evolved, not just as a man, but as a person. And I hope now that my current character will speak for itself. Disney didn't let him do that. So Disney, much as we love you, Bob, uh, maybe you need to take a step back and, and, and reconsider your position on this. Seriously. Um, now, as far as me raising my kid and, and to, you know, to avoid situations like this, it's tough. Cause it is, you, because you, everything is on the Internet. Everything's on the Internet and you're impulsive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's hard. It's hard to temper down, temper down that impulsiveness, because you're, you're, you know, you're going through. You're hormonal, all right. So you're already a wreck. Your mind's already going a million different miles an hour. Um, so you know what you say, what you think, what you what you feel is going to come out a lot. Now my son doesn't have social media. He has an Instagram account that his mom posts pictures on for his sports. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have a Facebook. The closest, the only social media thing he has is Spotify. Because you can share music. That's fine. Can't share anything but music. That's cool. Um, so, and the point is, you know, we had this back in the early episodes uh, when we were going through the three-part uh, Jay and his son. Yeah. Um, you know, it, stuff that was going on and, you know, our big fear was that something was going to come out on the internet and there's a lot of sick people out. You know yeah, what I mean? Man. So you it's teaching him to think and you know don't let your emotions get the best of you stop for a second pause which is something i have to work on mm -hmm. because i am very impulsive i i i don't have as much of a presence on social media as i used to yeah i may share a couple of memes but as far as me posting my own thoughts i don't write as much as i used to anywhere near as much if you ask lorraine i'm always on it <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and I'm proud and almost embarrassed to say I've gotten better. <laughs> because if you look at how often I'm on there, it doesn't seem like I'm a person who's okay. I've gotten better. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Um, so it, it's, you know, it, it's hard to teach a kid not to be so impulsive and not to act on that impulse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Avoid fights. Take a step back. Think about what you're going to put before you hit send. Because once you hit post, it doesn't matter if you delete it in five seconds. There's screenshots. There's screenshots, archives. There's cookies. Everything. It, everything. It, it's saved somewhere. 
and one now the and the only way because you can't avoid it. You, I mean, you could do everything you can to mitigate, but uh, every, some eventually something you do is going to come back and haunt you. Mm-hmm. And really, the only thing I can think to teach my kid about this is own it. Yeah, at the moment, that's exactly what I thought and what I felt. Since then, I've reconsidered my position. I don't think the same way. I'm not the same person. And I apologize for what I put. Or, yeah, no, fuck that. That's exactly how I think and feel right now. Facts. Own it and either show that you move past it or own it and say that that's still what you are. Um, you know, for better or for worse, you put it on. So you have to own that. Um, and at that point, it's just, you know, stepping up to the plate and, and, and you know, being a person that you can look at in the mirror. Yeah, man. You know, wh- whether you've changed or not, you did it at that point in time. This was me then. This is me now. Straight like that. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. It, it, there's no way to get around it. Social media is everywhere. Even when you're not on it, you're on it. Yeah. Sorry. It's some some something somewhere. A video is gonna catch you. You're you're tagged or somebody. Hey, this is my friend. He she or he doesn't have an Instagram, so your face is out there. Yeah. Things are out there. People are seeing you. Act accordingly. Be a decent person. And people stop going back and looking at people's ten year old posts. Nobody is the same. Man, stop bringing up old shit. Stop bringing up old shit. Why you always bringing up old shit? Ugh. God damn. Fucking up the whole MCU for us. That's why we're really pissed off. Yeah, really. <laughs> nah, so, man, but you guys let us know what you think about this. For real, for real. Because it is, it is, I can understand why, but at the same breath, I'm like, it's 10 years ago. He owned it. He's sorry. He didn't, he didn't do anything. Yeah, now, now, and, and that's not taking away, again, we're looking at context. So that's not taking away yeah. if somebody's going to say, well, what about Kevin Spacey? Because what he did was over 30 years ago. Yeah, but he did something. Yeah, the, you, yeah, again, and that's what I'm saying. Consider the context of what was going on. Yeah. You know, he allegedly, well, I'll, I'll say allegedly, I'll get the benefit of the doubt because you know, we, we, we don't know. We weren't there. We can only go with what people are saying. Um, and, and that's not to play devil's advocate. That's just being honest about the situation. Allegedly, what he did, he did to somebody 30 years ago. He took advantage of a person and he actually committed that crime. Allegedly, um, James Gunn was being a smart ass on Twitter. Yeah, who wasn't? Who yeah, isn't. And it's not like back then it was a sensitive topic. I mean, obviously, it's always a sensitive topic. I'm not saying that it wasn't, but it's it's not like you know women were coming out or in some, men in some situations coming out talking about how they were victimized, and he came out like, "Oh, boo hoo, woe is me." Yeah, I I feel bad too. No, he wasn't doing that. Yeah. He was coming up from a place of jest. He wasn't a big name. No one knew who he was. He was trying to get attention. On Twitter, much like Takashi Six Nine, um, yeah. Which you know, when you're in the entertainment industry, hits sell, and I don't mean hits like music. I mean hits on the internet, like yeah, retweets, reposts, reactions. It sells. So if you can get a rise out of people and get a response out of people, that makes you more marketable. Unfortunately, yeah. And you know, back then, that was the the method he tried to do. Doesn't necessarily mean he believed in it. I can read those tweets and think to myself. Yeah, he's obviously making fun of the situation, Mm -hmm. you know, and and you have to consider that you can't just hold somebody's feet over the fire without thinking about what their intent and what their motivations were. Exactly. It's it's ridiculous. But guys, let us know what you think. Give us a call. Three, two, one, four, zero, five, twenty two, nineteen. Sound off on the topic. Has there any I know Facebook has that memories feature. Oh, yeah. Gone back and look at the shit that you said 10 All years ago. the time. I was an idiot. Yeah. Oh, my God. I hate my, my old self. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So I, I look at my, I'm like, I'm looking at like 20, 24 year old Jay like, oh, my God, dude, what's wrong with you? Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, let us uh, share it. Share it with us. We, we would love to see yeah. if you want to share it. If you, if you got situations that you went through, if you got situations that your kids are going through. Yeah. Maybe some of you got some older kids or kids that posted something and it came back at school or something like that. Mm-hmm. How did you handle that? We, we really want to know because we, we not only do we want to know so we can best prepare for it. There are other parents on this podcast who might need the guidance and might appreciate it. So True. please, please, please share your stories. Let us know. Uh, if you want to be anonymous, I mean, 
or if you if you want to be anonymous, you can email us at uh, no dad jokes at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. Tell us you don't want your name mentioned. We'll make a post or mention of it on the podcast or, or on the on the social media pages. Yep. If you're not worried about being uh, anonymous, you don't mind sharing. Hit us up on Facebook at the Pops on Podcast. Same goes for Instagram. Hit us up on the Pops on Pod on Twitter. Uh, and where can they leave voicemails again? Three two one four zero five twenty two nineteen. We'll be able to share it with our listeners. Yeah, please, really, really do participate because this is a big topic right now. Yes, uh, we we'd love to know how you're dealing with it with your families. How how are you teaching your kids about it? How are you reacting to it for the people that are in this situation? We'd really like to know. We'd really like to share that and help out the community. Uh, it, we're only a strong. The familia is only as strong as the members in it. Oh my God, that's right. All right. Well, that said. That's going to do it for tonight. Uh, this went longer than we thought it would. So, yay, good times for us. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> we actually were able to deliver an episode. Exactly. And listen, man, uh, again, like we said during pop-offs, uh, I will be on the Burn It Down show. Uh, Dabs, KJ, Flow, Computer, I cannot wait to see you guys. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Subscribe and listen to them, guys. Yeah, and you can catch me again this weekend, July 26th. That's a Thursday, uh, all the way to Saturday, July 28th at Gregory's Upstairs Comedy Club in Cocoa Beach, Florida, where I will be hosting the show for Mr. Eric Myers, who's a great comedian. Go check him out on YouTube. He's funny as hell. Um, that said, uh, we're the guys. I'm Jay Alvarez. This is Raul. Marcel, uh, Marcel's got his microphone off. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Hey, we forgot Marcel was here. <laughs> hey, guys, that's going to do it for us for tonight. Don't forget, spoil kids, not movies. And please, no dad jokes. Peace. Peace.